So I have a confession to make. Um, I follow people, like not just on Twitter, but in all sorts of corners of the internet. I, I like finding dope art on the internet, whether it's a cool video, animation, song, or whatever. And in the comment sections of any of this kind of stuff, you're certain to find people who are incredibly inspired. They, they might say something like, this art has totally inspired me. I I'm gonna toss my hat in the ring and do something great. Or that's it, it's decided. I'm quitting my job waiting tables and I'm going to do something like what you just did, but full time. These statements are intense and life changing. Like these are the kinds of things that people say right before they're gonna turn over a new leaf or start a new chapter in their life. And you know, from years ago, I used to keep tabs on people like that. Like if, you know, if anyone ever said that they were gonna do that and start something new, I'd see what they would do. I would follow their online presence and see what they make and how they grow. And years ago, sometimes you'd actually see output. You'd actually see people starting things and you, you would see a little narrative to their creative story that was really cool. I'm not a statistician, but these days I see two times as many people inspired either in comments or on Twitter, which is really great. But honestly, I see barely as many people actually doing something after they say that they'll do that. Now, there are a lot of variables to consider. You know, if they're a painter, their work might not necessarily go online, uh, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the folks into YouTube, Instagram, you know, the social influencers. And I mean, here are some examples of what I'm talking about. An aspiring voice actor in the profile with no voice acting reel in the link. An aspiring writer in the profile with no article or thought piece to feature in the link. An aspiring photographer with one blog post from four months ago about the camera he or she just purchased and no work to show. Which led me to some thoughts that I've been having with friends of mine about being inspired. You know, the word aspiring is such a popular term for artist profiles and it's quickly turned the phrase aspiring writer into, yeah, writing seems cool, I'm still thinking about it. You know, an amazing idea to do something new and impressive comes along and the weight of pulling it off for many people is so crippling that it, it paralyzes all efforts to get it done. I bring this up because I get it and I wanna talk about it. I, I wanna answer the question, can we be too inspired? Kazuhiro Kibushi, the author and illustrator of graphic novel Flight, as well as the webcomic Copper, uh, coined the term idea debt to describe the creative friction he runs into when his ambitions don't necessarily line up with his output. Um, he says, I try not to look at what I'm going to do as this amazing, great, grand thing. Uh, now I'm actually solving problems in the moment, and that's so much more exciting than trying to fill years of what I like to call my idea debt. Uh, you think, oh, I'm going to do this epic adventure and it's going to be so great. The truth is, no matter what you do, it will never be as great as it is in your mind. And so you're really setting yourself up for failure. This is so real for so many people. I see ambition sometimes get in the way of the legs required to push something to ship. Um, I had an amazing, thoughtful, strong, and loving coworker named Roxanne who was all about doing excellent work. But she knew that there are even greater ideologies that need to support excellence in the real world. Uh, there needs to be work-life balance, uh, knowing the project's limits, knowing your own limits, and knowing that her timeline of creativity is much larger and deeper than just one project. Because of this, she had a post-it note on her desk that she would refer to constantly with the team that read, done is better than perfect. You will always hate it later. It's proof that you're growing. It, it won't be 100% your initial vision, and frankly, that's fine. It, your vision isn't perfect, and if we're honest, no one's vision is tried and true anyway. The only way it will get better is if you actually put your gloves on and step in the ring. Which brings us to the second part of Kibushi's explanation, in which he says, I like snowboarding, and I used to like hitting all the jumps. And when I would go down a mountain, I would notice a bunch of young snowboarders who were waiting at the top of the jumps. Um, they may look like they were waiting their turn, but in fact they're waiting there because they're afraid to hit that jump, and what they don't realize is that over time they're getting colder. Uh, the idea debt of having to make that jump and land it and be impressive uh, is getting greater because of the amount of time they're investing waiting there, getting colder at the top of the hill. Uh, by the time they actually do it, they're probably not going to fulfill that dream, so I learned to just hit the jump or pass it, do it in the moment or not at all. Idea debt is the over-romanticization of creative success. Uh, sometimes it's for the betterment of people's technique, which I completely understand. Sometimes it's for personal praise or validation, which is the equivalent of a steeplechase on a treadmill. You will never think that you're enough. 
you will never feel completely validated through the things that you create. There will never be this ultimate final moment of perpetual self-satisfaction where you feel like you've made it. And if you do walk around thinking that you've made it, you probably don't have that many friends. We are just wired to never be filled and to always want just one more, just that many more subscribers, just that many more likes, just that many more followers. Dude, I don't have universal advice for this epidemic of stagnance, uh, but there is something that I've committed to that I don't plan on letting go. Um, ever since college, I made it a point to never announce or share the details of something that I'm about to do before I'm confidently 80% into completing it. I used to not share it all at first, but I found that starting when you're close to finished, especially the day before shipment, uh, almost adds this additional pressure to not make yourself a liar and to just like get the thing done as soon as possible. So I use it as a, as a means of accountability more than anything else. It all started from this article that I was reading in the Harvard Business Review about the brain's pleasure centers and how they work scientifically and how saying, hey world, I'm about to do a thing, releases the same chemicals of satisfaction as actually just doing the thing. Uh, making the announcement feel as rewarding as the finish line even though you haven't really done anything yet. Hype is the worst thing that we have. It's, it's the reason why the anticipation of the weekend is so much more exciting and captivating than thumbing through Yelp in your contact book on Saturday, wondering what you're actually gonna do on that weekend. Anticipation of an event is often greater than the event itself, sadly. Here's what I wonder. What would happen if we didn't worry about how we were gonna be ranked for something that we've never actually achieved yet? Uh, what would happen if we let go of the Kanye deep inside of us that desperately needs to scream they're the greatest rapper of all time? Uh, what would happen if we just focused on our work and let other people do the job of talking and speculating? I think we'd be more honest because, you know, right there, we've stripped away all reasons to alter anything based on unborn opinions of other people that we don't know. Hibushi said it. Freedom is found in solving problems in the moment. Satchel like a bag drakes, copacetic.